Hi guys, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to our series of Azure Active Directory and in this video I'm going to talk about Azure AD registered devices. Now if you're watching the series from the beginning in the last video I have discussed about device identity model what kind of device identities are there and what are the three different type of device identities. The agenda for this video will be knowing what is Azure AD registered device or workplace joined device, how you should register a machine in Azure Active Directory and what exactly happens when you register a machine in Azure Active Directory. The last and the most important part that I will be showcasing is how single sign-on works on a machine that is Azure AD registered. Now for any machine to be Azure AD registered device, the user has to register that machine first. And what this does, a device object is created in Azure Active Directory. Now the purpose behind this is to give single sign-on on the devices that belongs to users. That means users can bring their personal laptops and get them registered in Azure Active Directory and you will be able to provide single sign-on and you will be able to control the device identity as well. I will also be showcasing you what happens when you disable a device object in Azure Active Directory. Now all this is done because when the device is registered in Azure Active Directory, a device object is created and a certificate is pushed to that particular device so that Azure Active Directory can trust that particular device. And all this happens when you will try to register or when the user will try to register a particular device in Azure Active Directory. Now, since we know that for Azure AD registered device, when you are signing in in your machine, then you can use personal or local accounts. But when you will register your machine in Azure Active Directory, you need a corp identity. That means in our case, it will be user at the rate concepts work.com. This applies to Windows 10, iOS, Android, and Mac OS. Now this video will be entirely dependent on demo. So for my lab, what I have done is I'm using a Windows 10 machine. The host name of that machine is AAD register i will run dsrh command before joining that machine or before registering that machine to azure active directory and then again once the machine is registered i will run the same command just to show you guys the difference that you will see in terms of endpoints and in terms of status for that particular machine which will get listed in the command prompt and again the last thing will be showcasing you how single sign-on works in an azure ad registered machine so the very first thing that I would like to showcase you guys now is the current status on that particular machine. So this is my machine, which I will be registering in Azure Active Directory. And if I do a host name, the host name is AAD register. Now, if I do DS reg CMD space status, sorry, space forward slash status. This is the current state of my machine which is neither Azure AD joined nor workplace joined. And if I go to the current user certificate folder, there is no certificate getting listed here. But once this machine is Azure AD registered, there will be a certificate that will be listed here. There is one more thing which I would like to showcase you guys before I get this machine registered. And that is if I go to browser or if I open my browser and if I try to sign into portal.azure.com, I am getting prompted for credentials to enter my username and password and this should not be the case once the machine is Azure AD registered. This is the basic difference that we have to understand. Now without any delay, I'll click on start and then I'll click on settings and now I'll go ahead and register my machine. So to register the machine, click on accounts and then click on access or work school and then click on connect. Now the same console is used to get your machine joined to Azure Active Directory as well. So if you are joining your machine to Azure Active Directory, select this option. But since we are scoping to Azure AD registered device, I will simply type in my username and then I'll click on next. Now, since I have not selected the option, the second option, which was join, this machine will get registered 
only with Azure Active Directory. That means in order to sign into this machine, I'll be using my local accounts, but I'll get SSO to those resources which are protected by my organization. So I'll sign in with my password and I'll click on sign in. So as of now, this machine object is getting created in Azure Active Directory, which has been done now. And I'll click on done to close this. And as you can see that now it is showing that on this particular machine, this device, sorry, this user account was used to register this particular device. Now, if I go back to my certificate container and I refresh this, let's see if there is any certificate or not. As you can see that I have a certificate which says issued to this particular GUID and issued by MS Organization Access. Now, this GUID starts from 4.2 and ends with 5.b.2. And let me show you what is this GUID all about. For that, what I'll do is I'll switch to portal.azure.com. And now I'm going to select my device. I've just clicked on refresh. And as you can see, the device is getting listed here. And if you see the device ID, it shows 425B2. So the device ID that will be mentioned in a particular device should be available in the certificate, which is there on particular machine. Now, since this machine is Azure AD registered, run. let's run this command again. And let's see the difference that we see here. So for Azure AD join, it is still showing no because we have manually registered this machine to Azure Active Directory. And as you can see, it is showing as workplace join set to yes. So now I'm going to show you how SSO works on an Azure AD registered device. And uh, for that, I'm just going to launch Fiddler. And then uh, we'll launch a browser that will by default go to portal.azure.com. And now we should not be prompted to enter username and password. And as you can see, I have not got any prompt wherein I have to enter username and password. And now let me show you how exactly this happened. So if I click on frame number eight, as you can see, there is a cookie that's been used, a set of information that's been sent to this particular endpoint. And if I copy the value of this particular header and paste it to a notepad, and I'm just going to copy this set of information, which is actually a PRT, and I'm going to open a different browser now to show you guys how you can go ahead and decrypt this information. So for that, I'll go to jwt.ms, and now I'm going to just copy this token. And as you can see that this is the refresh token which has been used to request an ID token for a particular user. So once this token is presented, a new token was being sent to portal.azure.com or presented by the browser to be very specific. And if I'll try to search the content of this particular token that's been sent, as you can see that it is actually an ID token that contains claims about the user with which I tried to sign in. So this is how SSO works when your machine is Azure AD registered. Now what I'll do is I'll switch to my browser and I will disable this device. And then let's see what is the user experience. So this is my device and what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable this device and then I'll again switch to my machine and I'll just close all this. And then I will try to sign in again on portal.azure.com with the same browser and let's see what happens. So as you can see, now I'm again getting prompted to enter my username and password. I will enter my username and password, but I should get a prompt which says that this device is disabled by your organization. And as you can see, this is what I'm getting now. So this is the entire 
story behind Azure AD register devices, how exactly they work, what happens when you register your device in Azure Active Directory. So let's talk about a quick summary for this particular video. So we have discussed about Azure AD register devices, how workplace join devices work, how you can register your devices to Azure Active Directory, how a certificate is pushed, how device ID is added in the certificate, and how single sign-on works on an Azure AD registered device. In the next video, we are going to talk about Azure AD joint devices. So if you guys have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe. If you have any feedback, query or suggestion, feel free to reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.